Welcome to the Mixercist. Hey everybody, welcome to the Mixercist. EB, how's it going, dude? Good CW. Welcome to the Mixercist, everyone, and uh, good to see everyone again. And what's been going on with you, man? Uh, a lot of bad dreams, man. Bad dreams. I don't know what it is. I think I, I, I think I took too much. <laughs> Always. <laughs> They're from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. You took too much, man. I took too much. Took too took much. Too much. <laughs> Which they stole from Cheech and Chong, really, right? I mean, oh, they totally did. Took totally too much, did. Man. Um, yeah. Well, you, know, you got to be careful because now is the uh, we're getting to the darkest time of the year coming up in a few days, and uh, depending on when this airs. I told you about the bad dream I used to have when I was a kid where uh, Santa Claus was like banging against my window and he had blood dripping down his, like his mouth into his beard and stuff. And he was like, can I come in? Can I come in? I told you, I told you to tell you about that <laughs> no, back in the day. Do you remember that? that? Yeah, maybe, it was messed I up. I had that. that. Yeah. There was like a dream I had when I was 12 that Santa Claus was, I used to live on like most, <laughs> most people. My bedroom was on the second floor. So Santa Claus would be floating in front of my window. I wake up middle of the night and he was just there, you know, he's just watching me the whole time I was sleeping, I guess. And he's just bobbing up and down in front of my window and he's like tapping gently, but it's not really doing anything. And he's like, hey, can I come in? Can I come? <laughs> <laughs> it only works if you invite them in, right? So It does. Yeah. You yeah. yeah. I had no chimney. In. So I guess, I guess that's what he does when there's no chimney. He just hangs outside the door and uh, wipes the blood away from his nose on his leather Christmas glove. I don't know. <laughs> <It's> beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a movie. It's that be an amazing movie, sort of like Silent Night, <laughs> Deadly Night, or something. You know? So yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. But that you know that just reminded me of something really important that I was thinking of uh, uh, yesterday. Yeah. And you know we've had this discussion about what's the most important movie of the seventies, and we sort of mm. centered around The Exorcist and Halloween. But what about yeah. and this is timely, Black Christmas. Black Christmas. I haven't watched that in forever. Forever, I haven't seen that. It came out Damn. in nineteen seventy four, mm-hmm. and That's it is crazy. a slasher movie. It is. Slash yeah. movie in 1974. That's, it also has Pretty the whole, good. the calls coming from inside the house thing going on. Oh, and that, and that shit so with good. the plastic bag and the, <gasps> the, the, the body in the attic and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And you know that yeah. that was filmed in Toronto, right? I did not know that. The Black Christmas House is in Toronto. I believe it's uh, Lee Side, no Eglinton area, maybe around there. I don't know. Uh, That's a good place for, yeah. I so, yeah, want to visit I'll, there this season, right? You know, just We should do that. Make the current owners uncomfortable, right? You know? We should just stand outside. It's like, <laughs> we're back. Kind of like, uh, remember Prince, Prince of, Pr- John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness with Alice Cooper, just kind of <laughs> all ghostly and pale, just kind of hanging yeah. out outside the dude's window. Just That's yeah. it. Same sort of thing. Um, <laughs> did I talk to you about American Psycho being filmed in Toronto? Did we talk about that? We did not talk about episode? that. So the scene where he's in the dry clean, the whole thing was filmed, parts of it in Toronto, and it's meant to look like New York, but he's getting his dry cleaning done. And it's right by where, I mean, I used to live right there. And it's where I spend a ton of my time is in um, a St. Lawrence Market. There is a, a, a grocery store that's underneath a condo building and across the street from that, is a dry cleaner and that's the dry cleaner like you can see when he's arguing with the guy who works at the dry cleaning place and he's he's trying to get these sheets and it's covered in blood and he's trying to tell him it's cranberry juice and she's like i don't know how to get it out and he's flipping out he's losing his mind and when you look at the window you can see that building so that's another thing we should add to our list of toronto horror movie Mm. sites to see definitely sounds like an expedition coming up after the uh i feel like i feel like maybe we take the cameras uh, Take the cameras, make it an episode for everybody. Yeah. We, oh, let's do that for let's sure. Here's yeah. the Black Christmas house. Here's the, uh, we'll, we'll come up with a yeah. list of things, right? You know? And, and hey, if you're going to stand outside someone else's house, might as well have a camera in your hand oh, to make it yeah. extra creepy. <laughs> I'm sure it's happened to them before, right? You can see online and people go to, go to different places and post pictures. They, they post totally. uh, pictures of, uh, various locations. Oh, that's not good. Not good. So you got a passion project these days. You have bumped into this new uh, profile for like a guitar simulation and uh, it's in the Nebula ecosystem. So why don't you tell us about it? All right. Yeah. Well, we have Suri. We have Suri from Sound Drops. This is a profile, a collection of profiles rather, I should say, because you get the amp and the cabinet and a space, which includes a really awesome room and, uh, and then the full package uh, profile. I believe it's mm-hmm. it. They say it's a classic 70s amp, 
50 watts. And, and the fact that it's Surrey tells me, okay, well, this is a high watt. And because high watt, we're from Surrey, right. UK. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Not the hundred watt version, and everyone knows those. The, f- the fifty watt version, I've, I've, is it the DPR five hundred four or something I, like that? I, I, I actually know. wouldn't know. I don't know. Anyway, the high watts are known for their kind of uh, massive amounts of headroom, even so much so that you yeah. can run you can run bass through them. Um, so not a huge amount of, of distortion slash gain, but enough to get a good crunch. Right. And let me t- well, right. let's just play it because I think you're going to hear uh, what this can do right away. Mm-hmm. And it comes with a uh, another profile that's called Space. So pull up now. And this has two reverbs that you can add. One's a spring reverb and the other one's a studio room. Well, listen to this room. To me, that's just Very cool. sounds fantastic. I've not heard anything that good. Uh, so when you have a chance to play it without the plug-in like, turned off, so just your guitar direct, so we know how much uh, affecting we're hearing there, right? How much it's affecting the tone. Sure, here's the DI. The DI signal. Right. Could turn on the amp right. on by itself without the room. This is an amp and, and cabinet combination. Yes. And now here I'll put the room on. Oh. Isn't that awesome? It's incredible. I can't get over it. You can actually put like vocals or drums through this room. Because and that's oh, yeah. that's the beauty that it they, they give you the room separately, so it doesn't have to necessarily be t- tied to a guitar sound. Like, check this out. Here's a, just a, a vocal. And I can't wait. All right, that's without the room. Here's with the room. And I can't wait. And I won't break. Sounds nice. real. It does sound real. It's um, it's a little bloomy in the stereo category. Like it's you hear the width being added, but in a sparse, sorry, in a sparse mix where there's not a ton going on, mm. that would be a really welcome room room sound. You know, I'm a big fan of like the '80s Judas Priest stuff, like Screaming for Vengeance, where that whole record is room tone. Mm-hmm. If you really listen to it, you hear you hear guitar cabs in a room almost too much, right? And uh, so one thing to know is that this reverb is not configurable. You can pick spring or room and that's it. That's right. So there's yeah. no way to, there's no way to change like the RT 60 or the decay or any no. of that stuff. No, you get a low cut and a high shelf. That's which it. is really important for reverbs, right? Because yeah. cutting the low and the high on that room reverb would take away a lot of that imposing stereo, uh, moosh, right? That's, that's right. the technical word for it. If you study in a proper school, it's called moosh. And so it'll help you really trim that back and reduce the vibrance of the reverb. But aside from that, there's nothing you can muck with there, which is probably why it sounds so good. It's probably one perfect <laughs> profile. Oh, that's it's it, been yeah. sampled, but it sounds amazing. And these guys are crazy at sound drops. They're uh, meticulous. <laughs> They're crazy. So much guess, atten- no, I'm serious, so much attention to detail. <laughs> I, I, so another shows, thing I noticed. Can- when you turned off, by the way, when you turned off the plug and just played your guitar straight, I don't know if that was your Explorer or what, but there's a real, it, um, the humbucker's got a real bite yeah. on it, real nosy kind of bite, eh? And I noticed that when you threw the Surrey on, it kind of honored that, though. It didn't do anything to mess too much with the tone of your pickup. Right, Like, right. you could hear that's definitely the same guitar. When you shut the plug in off, you're like, that's a nice sounding bridge humbucker. It really is. That's a 57 Classic plus 57 classic plus uh, on a, yeah, yeah. And, it sounds uh, great yeah, and the plug-in doesn't mess with it right 
No, it just, I mean, it just sounds like you used a good amp. And that's, and, and you can go with the dynamics. If you go, let's say, I notice when I play quiet, cleans up, right? Mm. Mm. But you can dig in and get that grind. Mm. But to, to me, that's. You could use that on a record, no problem. I don't think anyone oh, would know totally. that it wasn't a real amp in a nice room. Oh, insane. It's, it's, it sounds so good. It plays so good. The only downside, in fact, is that I couldn't get it to play uh, like in low latency and put monitoring mode, so I couldn't play with it. Right. I had to record a track and then put, put it on, right? Whereas I'm used to the UAD stuff, which is all zero latency, input monitoring right there, totally tactile. Like there's no delay whatsoever. Right. Whereas with this, it was a little bit different. You kind of had to, you know, you had to um, record it. I had to do the same thing uh, because, you know, it uses so much CPU. This is a totally different uh, technology. Now, I have heard reports that some people can get it to work. I, I couldn't on my machine. My machine's pretty fast, but right. maybe it's just not right. configured the right way or something. But oh, it could be. Could but be. that extra step is so what I what I did is I, I just put another amp that sort of sounded similar from another, you know, manufacturer that didn't use as much CPU to record everything and then dinged yeah. up the final tone. So I just recorded the straight TI. Now, there isn't much more distortion on tap than that, than what you've already heard. Right. However, mm -hmm. what they give you is a separate cab profile. So if you just yeah. go with just the cabs, and mm -hmm. I, I should actually show you here, because uh, you saw the amp and that had your basic treble presence, gain, bright, normal gains and stuff. And yeah. uh, But the cab also features a variety of microphones that you can choose from. On the amp, on the, like on the integrated plugin where you get the amp and the cab, you get three mics. But if you go for yeah. the cab plugin by itself, they give you four mics. And they all yes. sound different, but they all blend together really nicely in phase and all of that. Yeah. You can pan mm -hmm. each microphone. So you get right. a pretty huge variety of tones here. And the other thing you can do, if you've got just the cab plugin going on and say, oh, I want to have a higher gain sound, you could use another amp. Earlier this year, DB Quadro released some pretty amazing high gain amplifiers. Mm -hmm. Also really great sounding and really detailed. And I, they, I find they pair really nice together, the the, the right. uh, DB Quadro amps with the uh, Surrey cab. And let me see if I can find the kind of he a heavy example here that I can play here. Let's play like a solo here, and then I'll mess, uh, it's a high gain solo, and then I'll mess with the cabinet so that you can hear the, uh, sure. the different mics yeah. and what you can do. So it's a variety of tones that you can have from it. Um, mm -hmm. I've got another heavy. Just lots of great, uh, great tones to be had oh. in here. It plays with pedals mm -hmm. very nice too. So I should probably show you an example I had. Yeah. No, that's not a pedal. Okay, so I have on this example a an octave fuzz pedal. And mm. so it's uh, the octave fuzz pedal going into uh, my interface and, mm. uh, and then Surrey on it. And that's it. The Surrey, the Surrey amp and cab and the, uh, the space for the room. Okay. Kind of dirty and sick, right? Jimmy with it, throw some flanger. Mm 
Nice. Could easily make a record with that. Easily make a record with that. Sounds great. And here's like a, an overdrive pedal, rat pedal. Mm -hmm. bit of, we'll put yep. a bit of delay on there. Mm -hmm. So you get those kinds of tones. Oh, here's a good, here's a good one. We'll throw some chorus on there and uh, maybe 80s it up a bit. Let me take a bit of that gain down. I, might, I think I might, it's hard to tell in the headphones, I might have been clipping a little bit there. Let's take the gain down on the amp just a tad. Throw some chorus on there. Oh, yeah. Let's so maybe rerun that again. Let's run it again here. So uh, clean. You're just sounds. skipping through. You're skipping through the centuries with this thing. I mean, you had everything from. So you used the full stack for the the really bluesy sounding bits at the beginning, which to my ear were the best things you played. Like just the way when you dig in with the pick, mm -hmm. the the distortion jumps up. I mean, fantastic. Sounds so good. And then you started using. You started pulling out the uh, the amp head profile and just using the cabinet and the reverb profile. Mm -hmm to add some dimension and depth and different voicings to previously recorded uh would they have been the pre those recordings that you made would they have been including a cabinet or would they have been cabinet free oh cabinet free yeah they're... okay so, so, so you're, either you're, you're, you're not or, you're not putting got it yeah or a pedal like the one had an octave fuzz on there so it was just yes. the guitar into the pedal into the interface and the same with the overdrive they sounded really natural to me, like nothing about the having the Surrey come after the octave pedal sounded much different than putting it in front of a regular amp. Mm -hmm. So it sounds really, really cool. Yeah, it plays really nice. You can do, you can go the other oh. way too, and you can uh, put the Surrey amp in front of like another cabinet of your choice in the DAW. So if you had, uh, right. I don't know, some impulses that you liked. I almost kind of don't know why, because the, the, the cabinet sounds so good on this, right? They do. <laughs> It'd be pretty hard to Incredible. beat, right? But yeah. you do have them all separated so that you can uh, you can mix and match. And it plays nice with your other gear. I mean, I was also had, uh, instead of a guitar pedal, I had like a SPL twin tube in front mm -hmm. just to give it a bit of an extra tube stage, basically. That's a yep. really good choice to just to throw in front if you need if you need more distortion. Uh, there's some yes. free plugins. Here's a free overdrive from Analog Obsession that's really nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Mercurial makes one. They actually make two that are free. There's a yep. kind of like this Meza style one, and then there's a, a Tube Screamer one that they have. Soft yep. Amp is another free thing. This this uh, like basically another gain stage, another tube. And I've experimented with putting these in front, and they work pretty well too, just like the pedals do. Just to give That's you that little, little extra if you needed it. And mm -hmm. uh, clean sounds fantastic. I mean, I got a bass here. I got a clean. Do we want to hear and Do we need to hear anything yeah. more? I mean, sure, let's sure. Let's hear can... the bass just for fun. Here it is. Okay, let's get a decent tone quickly. Take off the delay. Take off the chorus. It sounds like warming up in the high school gym. Do you remember that? When you when you were standing outside having a smoke break or whatever, that's and right. the bass player was still just going to town. So there's all this gym sound. You nailed it, dude. That's insane. <laughs> that's the gym sound. That's awesome. It's the, it's the, Before the, it's the warm the up bands. in the school gym sound. Yeah. That's right. Or the Christmas talent before, show or the coffee before house. Before assembly. <laughs> that's it. That's Work, it. Working away on those rush licks, those Getty riffs. <laughs> uh, pretty much. <laughs> So it's kind of really nice, nice bottom. Again, these amps had is. a ton of headroom, so you could open up probably a bit more headroom by turning the master down yep. and turning that up, finding a good balance between those two. That's pretty yep. nice. Still a lot of room, still a lot of gym on that. A lot of gym noise. <laughs> well, let's dry it up and uh, could play with the microphones maybe, because they do give you three microphones on the main head too. Yeah. So. Yeah. If you're using that instead of the cab plugin. There's a bit more pick attack on that one. I think we were just, list, just listening to mic one for a lot of these examples. Yeah. Anyway, lots to play with. The more you get into it, the more you 
get to learn the different uh, tones of the cabinets. But they all sound like nice old classic vintage cabinets. You hear the wood, you hear the speaker, you hear the Judas Priest room. (laughs) Yeah, you do. (laughs) You hear Tittenhurst Park, British Steel. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Um, So I got a clean sound. That's pretty sweet. Clean sound here, too. Let's turn it down a bit. Ooh. We're getting too loud. I'm going to start that again. Let's get a clean sound here. Just a delay in chorus. I think it's an active EMG pickup. Mm. Let's exaggerate that chorus a little bit. (laughs) This one here, by the way, is also another free plugin for Mercurial, one of the best courses that you can find in the box. I love it. It's very nice. So yeah, I mean, let's see. You span the decades. You can span the tones. You can span the uh, the different. You got a bit of everything want. in there, man. Yeah, and uh, authentic. Like you got a real kind of uh, Dawkins slash Def Leppardy kind of sound uh, out of your your high gain with the Rat pedal, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's crazy good. Yeah. I mean, if you have old, old like old tube rack mount preamps and stuff, like if you've got oh. an ADA one, MP1 maybe, mm-hmm. or like a Digitac mm-hmm. or like one of those, or, yep. uh, or a Kitty Hawk. Ooh. Kitty Hawk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or Jackson that. 1000. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah if you yeah. got any of that kind of gear, it, it, it'll play nice with us too. Totally. Man, if it sounds great. That. So, yeah. um, What's what's the story with these guys? Is this their first major plug, or have they got a, a bunch no, of releases? Or? A bunch of releases. They've been doing Nebula profiles for a long time. They have uh, okay. a, a Paltech series called Pure Tech, which are equalizers. Mm. They're fantastic. Yeah, nice. Uh, kind of like Paltech uh, Paltech Plus, really. So that's worth checking right. out if you if you're on the Nebula pro, uh, if you're on the Nebula program. They have a yep. compressor called Mantis which is equal oh, okay. it's based on a pwm compressor which is kind of a rare way of doing it i can only mm-hmm. think of a few i think the pi compressor worked on that principle i don't i'm not even sure what it does but again it's just okay. a really smooth really beautiful uh compressor so yeah they've been in the game for a while nice. i don't know awesome. if they did awesome. amps before but this might might be the first amp don't quote me on that but they knocked it out it's of the really good oh, oh yeah. did they ever it's really good i could see using this on a ton of stuff every time you come in here you're breaking my concentration. You're distracting me. Hey, thanks for walking us through this, man. This is a really great sounding plugin. And uh, there's a free trial for anyone uh, who wants to give it a shot. And you get it. You download it. Uh, was it from, was it inside Nebula? How did you find this? Uh, it's in Aquarius. Do you have to grab it from the vendor site? Yeah, so it's if inside you go to Aquarius? Acoustica, right. go to Acoustica, right. you get their download manager, which is called Aquarius. And I, actually, yep. I think they've added a function. You could just do it online now too, right? So if you've got an account with them, I think yes. you, now that you, you can actually install their plugins without the software, but don't quote me on that. But that's right. yeah, all in that software. So anywhere where you, you install Acoustica plugins in that uh, Aquarius it there. there, it's there. So type, type in a search bar for Surrey and it'll come up. Yep. And you also need the Nebula player because that's what it loads into. Right. So you get the right. Nebula right. player, right. you get Surrey. Once you squared away, and also pick up the free stuff while you're there. If you if you take the time to go to Acoustica's site and uh, yeah, um, and sign up with them, they have free plugins which are incredible sounding. Yeah. They're going to sound better yeah. than some of the ones that you probably paid a lot of money for. So, no doubt, like no Coffee doubt. the Pun is one that that EQ is oh so ooh. good. And it's free, so good. Yeah, um, hard to believe, so. but it's free. All right, got to be happy. Is that about wrapping up for. Yeah, oh, you yeah, do. Yeah. Is that about wrap it up? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, man. friends. I'm going to go hope hang you, out I hope you attic. enjoyed. Plastic bag in the attic. Plastic bag. 